my name is Justine Smith. I am a food technology teacher at Halewood Centre for Learning, based in Halewood. Um, I work there for three days a week at the moment, and I work two days as an honorary lecturer at uh, Liverpool John Moores University and an associate tutor at Edge Hill University. When I was about 20, uh, which is a long, long time ago now, I worked in the food industry and I was a product development manager for Cadbury's Cakes uh, and, and Miss Kipling Cakes, which is a company called Manor Bakeries. And whilst I was uh, there, this was based over in Morton in the, on the Wirral, uh, I was asked to go into schools and do some um, just talks about what life was like in the food industry. And I did quite a few of them um, all over the Wirral and actually here at, at Journey when it was a polytechnic. Um, from that, um, I really, really enjoyed it and um, I decided I'd had enough within the food industry, um, gosh, when I was about 25, 26, um, and thought, I think I might retrain um, as a teacher. So basically went back to university, got um, a degree, did a degree in home economics uh, with a view to doing the PGCE in um, secondary design technology. And that was my route into it. So industry, then university, then PGCE. Uh, usually all teachers are form teachers, so as soon as you uh, go in, usually around about half past eight in the morning, uh, you normally go to form, maybe organise your, your form room, um, and it depends whether you are key stage three um, form teacher, which is year seven, eight or nine, or a key stage form form teacher, which is year 10 and 11, or even a sixth form um, form teacher. Each each role is different, um, a lot of pastoral care within the youngsters, they might, might need looking after a little bit. Um, in Key Stage 4 it's more about you know exam preparation, but the normal day starts off with just seeing how they are, making sure they've got their uniform correct, make sure they've got the right equipment, take the register, which is a legal obligation, um, and then you go into your lessons. Now, depending on what type of a school you are at, I, I work at a co-educational school, in other words, boys and girls, um, from 11 to 18. Um, you, we have five lessons in any one day. So you go to your first lesson, then your second lesson, then you might have break, then third and fourth lesson where you have dinner, and then fifth lesson. Um, and then the, the kids go home and then your day supposedly finishes at around about course past three. But that's very, very rare because you're usually marking or assessing or you might be doing after school clubs. So that's a normal, typical day really. I mean, I think a lot of it, I teach in a practical subject area, uh, food technology is practical subject area, uh, which is part of design technology within our school. Um, and what we do is with Key Stage 3, we might make uh, products, but it's down to the pupils to actually go out, buy the ingredients, and then they come into the school and then they make them. Um, it depends which socioeconomic group um, your school or ca it, your school is in, in other words, what catchment area is it in. If you live in a very affluent area, then there mightn't be too much of, a, of a, an impact on it. But where uh, I work and the social area that, that, that I'm actually in, it might have an impact on them carrying out practicals. Uh, they might not be able to afford to buy the ingredients, in which case we try and uh, give them uh, a lot of the ingredients if we've got them in store for them. So it can do uh, within design technology. Um, it, it, a lot of it depends on where the school is within um, you know, the area. Well, usually it'd be really good, um, obviously, to get... You, you used to be able to go into teaching as an undergraduate and do uh, Key Stage 2-3 uh, with QTS in what whatever subject but nowadays uh, that's finishing and um, so you, the only way now to go into teaching is uh, to get a first degree in whatever geography history home economics in my case um, and then once you've done your degree which is usually three years uh, then you will do a postgraduate certificate in education a PGCA within your chosen area and that might be within secondary or within primary and within that you might decide you know which area you would actually like to work in. So for instance, I did my degree at John Moores University here at, at the Marsh campus um, in home economics. 
Uh, once I'd got my degree, um, I got a two-one degree. Um, I then uh, took a year out, and I got gained experience in a primary school for a couple of weeks. And I also went back into the food industry for um, about six months. It was. Uh, and within that year, I gained more up-to-date experience for myself. And because I'd worked in the food industry before, it was actually easier for me to get back into it because I had that um, experience on my CV. It's a whole chicken and the egg thing, isn't it? You need experience, but you can't get it. But I was very fortunate that I'd worked within the food industry. So that year out brought my skills more up-to-date. Having time in a primary school made me see what, sc what schooling was like for Key Stage um, 2, um, going into ski t uh, Key Stage 3. Uh, and then I applied for the PGCA uh, within Design Technology and Secondary Education with the main focus on food technology. And that's what I actually did. I think it's enthusiasm and it's a passion. Obviously, you've got to like children. I mean, there is there is absolutely no point in going into teaching unless you like being with with children um, of all ages. And I would absolutely say that that is the thing that keeps me going because you can start off the day and be in a very grumpy mood and you can be feeling a little bit down and then you get into school and something that the kids will say will just make your day. They They... It's out the mouths of babes, as they say, and they are so funny. And uh, they, it definitely keeps you young, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and I think when um, interview panels for teachers uh, happen, uh, usually with the senior leadership team, maybe the head, and you'll have the head of department um, who's in there. And I think they will probably look at you as a person. Obviously, uh, you'll have the qualifications, hopefully. Uh, you'll have a good degree, first degree. You'll have a good PGCA. Uh, will have passed all of the uh, criteria that's needed for that. But in the end, you've got to be able to fit into that school. So depending on what type of school it is, uh, will depend on what type of personality you've got. I absolutely, my personality fits in with my school and my kids and my style of teaching. Every person is very different on how they teach. Um, and, and I just think, you know, that they will look, it's a holistic approach within most um, uh, recruitment um, te of teachers, really. And uh, I think they will look at you as an individual and say, yes, you fit in with our, with our kids and with our team. I think if you are going into teaching, um, you do need to look at extracurricular things that you can be doing. So for instance, when I did my degree, my, my home economics degree, within that degree, there was um, a couple of months worth of work-based learning. So my work-based learning was to do with the food industry, which is, was applicable for my home economics degree. When I finished my home economics degree and I'd applied for the PGCA, within that year, I'd, I decided off my own back to um, go and do some training within a primary school. So during that time, even if you're going straight from your degree to your PGCA, if you can from, say, the June into the September, uh, maybe within the last six or seven weeks of term, go into a school, ask to do some voluntary work, whether it's within primary or secondary, it will give you an insight as to whether it's an area you actually want to be with in, uh, whether you actually like the kids. Um, and also, it, 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 it gives you a bit of help. Uh, you might decide, oh, this isn't for me, so then you won't want to do the PGCA, whereas uh, it might be exactly everything that you want. If you can run some social clubs, maybe youth clubs with the kids, that would be great. Um, depending on what university you're in, they might run clubs within the summer, so maybe summer clubs and stuff. So try and get as much um, exposure um, to working with kids as you possibly can before you start your PGCA. Within the application, try and, if you can, put a bit of your personality within your personal statement, um, something that'll catch their eye, something um, that you know says, oh yes, this person looks like she's, they really want or he wants to be a teacher. Um, like I say, try and get as much experience as you can working with, with um, younger people. Um, if you ha can do um, some work experience within schools or in youth clubs, that definitely looks good on your, 
your um, application. Um, and base, I, th I think if you can try and put your, yourself, um, your own personality within your application, and then obviously once you get to the interview, and hopefully you will get to, to the, through to the interview process, try, just try and be yourself um, and be enthusiastic about what you you know what you've done with the kids um, you know they might ask a question for instance what's the best thing that you've done well you discuss you know oh, well I I designed a little scheme of work for all these youngsters for this kids club or um, I it was my job to do the uh, help out in the Duke of Edinburgh within the school anything like that um, your passion for wanting to be a teacher and for being with kids that shines through and that will absolutely get you either a position on a PGC course or hopefully a job. It would have meant that they've gone above and beyond what they actually uh, need to do or it will absolutely give them that extra little um, edge compared to everybody else. Um, you know, if they had this certificate without a shadow of a doubt, and probably most employers or the PGC people on the, the panel or whatever would say, oh yes, they've gone uh, above and beyond. So, and I think that's what most people want to see. They want to see that you've gone, you've gone further, you've done extra curricular things, you've looked into things in a bit more detail. It shows that you really want to do it. And if you've got any of that kind of evidence, that will just look so favourably when you are applying for a PGCE uh, to go on a course or as a teacher. Whatever you've done a little bit extra than the normal person, then that shows your level of commitment to whatever you want to do. So I don't think you can do enough, really, to be honest.